The housing market looks like it's going to get worse before it gets better. What's up, everyone? Antonio here. I want to break down a little bit more about what's going on in the housing market. Again, we have some new data about house appreciation, and I want to break down how many people have what percentage of mortgage on their house, so 3% interest rate or 4% interest rates. This way, you actually get a good idea of how many homes have low interest rates, and this way, you can try to come up with ideas on how to structure offers in the future. This article from Housing Wire, home prices have gone up 4 consecutive months in a row they've set a a new record of home price again and it's crazy to think that because we're in this high interest rate environment and everyone expected the housing market to just crash and in a few markets it did like austin it dropped a lot and i heard some areas in california has dropped a little bit in the west coast but if housing appreciation continues this way and it doesn't dip at all throughout the winter we could end up with an eight percent appreciation now I think like some of the experts guessed somewhere between three and 4% appreciation, like a normal appreciation year, but that would be double appreciation, which is crazy. Again, this keeps leading back to the point that there is low supply. People aren't moving. And so the transactions are down, but house prices are up because the demand is still high comparatively to the supply. It's all about the comparison between demand and supply. And as long as you keep remembering that, you're going to be able to get through this pretty easily. At least that's my understanding of it. Again, guys, this is my first recession. I'm just trying to stay on top of everything. So this way, I make sure I'm not making any mistakes. And as I learn these things, I'm just trying to communicate them to all of you because I don't want you guys to make mistakes either. Mortgages are down, but 82% of all mortgages that have come out have been people who are buying. Okay, so only 18% are refinances or anything else, which basically means people do not want the higher rates, clearly. So this is another data point to prove that people are not trying to go for higher rates. They don't want it. Obviously, why would you want to pay more money? But almost everything that was a refinance was a cash out refinance because they're raising credit score minimums, it seems, for HELOCs, and they're not doing it on investment properties. It's been a little bit difficult to find some of those. It's possible, but it's a little bit harder to do. Though. But anyway... People who have really good credit scores go for HELOCs because they don't want to refinance all their old debt. They go for cash out refinances instead. That's what this article said. Now I want to combine it with something else I was able to find out. There's 23%. The U.S. has 23% of all homes, okay, have no mortgage on them, which means that there's 73% or 77%, which means that there's 77% of homes that have mortgages on them. Now that we know that much, 25% of all of which, if we do the math, is 0.25 times 77. That is 19% of all homes, 19.25% of all homes have less than a 3% mortgage. That means one out of every five houses on your block has less than a 3% mortgage. That is super crucial to understand. Okay, and I'll explain why in a second. Now, 62% of all homes that have a mortgage are less than... So if we multiply 0.62 times 0.77, that means almost half of all homes, 47.74%, have less than a 4% interest rate. And then less than 5% is 82% of 82, which is 67%. Two-thirds of all homes have less than a 5% mortgage. What does this mean? If you want to get out of a house and not afford to pay the interest rate, This is something that I'm learning about right now, subject to investing. I'm not trying to push this for you to do this because obviously not everyone's trying to sell and it's harder to find these subject to houses. But subject to is when you take over the mortgage of someone's house, okay? And you take over the mortgage by paying. Usually there's someone who's pre-foreclosed. This is my understanding of it. They're pre-foreclosed and you end up taking over their mortgage and you take over their mortgage by paying back some of the money that they owe. So this way they're not in pre-foreclosure anymore. They keep the loan in their name and then you end up taking over the deed of the house. That's my understanding of how it works. So if you're trying to find deals, it might be a that is one area that might be a good area for you to look into. So knowing this information can allow you to figure out what strategy is going to be better for you. Keep an eye on what's happening in the market. If appreciation goes up 8% 
it's going to be tricky because home prices have gone up and interest rates have gone up. That means that monthly payments have gone up and it gets harder and harder to find cash flow, which is why it's even more important for you to find cheaper areas for you to invest in. So if you're someone who wants help to find cheap areas to invest in, book a call with me down below. I help beginners buy their first rental property by doing all the work for them in a done for you process. I'm only able to take on a couple of clients. So hit the application button below and I'll catch you all in the next one. I appreciate all of you for being here and I hope this information has been super valuable to you. Peace.